Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. In Romania, and not only in Romania, I'm pretty sure that other cultures have this expression. Cine se scola de dimineață de parte ajunge. That is, and a straight uh, translation, whoever wakes up early in the morning will get far during the day. That is a beautiful, uh, how do you call it, autumn falls in Michigan. So I'm going to uh, go to my favorite town, uh, my home, and um, I will make a video over there. I'm going to introduce you to this beautiful town called Glen Arbor. I'm going to go today and make a video from this little town, um, quiet town and uh, beautiful, clean. All right, so what do we have today? We have about seven topics ranging from India to uh, Russia, to the United States of America, to Trump, obviously, to Ukraine. And um, let's start with the first one, including the fact that Mr. Stoltenberg, remember Mr. Stoltenberg? Yeah, he was uh, the NATO Secretary General. Now we got Mr. Rutte from the Netherlands, the big country of the Netherlands. Well, what do you want? I mean, you have to kiss someone's butt. And this guy decided he is the bigger, biggest kisser. Stoltenberg was, uh, you know, 10 years, uh, 10 year he needed to go. His lips are uh, already worn out from so much ass kissing. So let's start with the first article from Russia Today. India's tax probe reveals foreign driven agendas. So we're going to find out how things work with the NGOs. Uh, the NGOs, you know, some of them are funded and controlled to a certain extent by outside forces who are actually just cells inside countries, which is, well, we're here for uh, monitoring the human rights in your country, but we're going to try to make sure that the right political power or political parties are in power. These are the NGOs are working. And if they are funded more than 20% from outside, um, then you have to register as a foreign ag agent. That is, you work for someone else. Let's see. Uh, these guys have an eye on India now, and we're going to have Soros. I didn't expect Soros to be involved in India because, you know, Soros mainly is in Europe and small countries. But hey, there you go. An investigation into NGOs with links to US billionaire George Soros has shown a coordinated effort to undermine development project. So you have to refer when you talk about to billionaire George Soros, uh, you have to refer him as uh, to as a um, philanthropist, Hungarian born, hedge fund something, investor, billionaire George Soros. You have to ignore other things that could be interesting if you know them. All right, I mentioned them many times before. A probe by India Income Tax Department into five major non-governmental organizations, NGOs operating in the country has reportedly unearthed evidence that they used foreign funding for activities aimed at stalling economic and development project. So they're working against India? You bet your ass off, yeah, they, they did. They do. According to a report in India and Indian Express, the probe was launched after searches were conducted by tax authorities in September 2022 at the Indian offices of fine, I think five, probably NGOs, Oxfam, Center of, for Policy Research, and Environix Trust, Legal Initiative for forest and environment and care India solution for sustainable development. After conducting raids on a year later, tax authorities issued notices to the NGOs consisting of hundreds of pages and including various agreements, financial statements, email and minutes from board meetings in support of allegations against the organizations. So what's going on here? It says here, the tax department has alleged that the NGOs were working in concert, highlighting that they are interconnected in terms of funding and agendas and their key figures are interlinked. Well, what could that be, huh? Open Society Foundation, you have to look for this garbage. 
I mean, it does some good things, but mainly uh, it has to control the political system and, and society, open society. It means open every garbage so we can control it. Also backed an investigation into alleged stock market manipulation by the Adani conglomerate, which was revealed by the Orga Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, an international investigative platform known for its work in the Panama Papers and Pandora Papers. Well, they're, help, they're helping these guys, right? They're helping all the time, right here. Notably, Oxfam, which has been under investigation in India and whose license to receive funds from abroad was revoked by the New Delhi in 2022, is funded by US billionaire investor and philanthropist George Soros' Open Society Foundation. Soros has publicly criticized the links between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Gautam Adani, the chairman of the Adani Group. All right, so these guys claim that Soros has a hand. He had in Romania. First time when I heard about Soros and I was a poor teenager. Poor because I didn't know much. Uh, it was right, right after the 1989 revolution where I first, I think, in, no, I think, I think it was in 1990 when some people said, where are these guys, the mass uh, demonstrations that are 1990 and uh, Piazza Universitati uh, garbage sit down were founded, f funded by George Soros. It was the first time when I heard the name Zo George Soros in 1990 or 1991. And I was like, who's this guy, George Soros? I didn't know anything about that guy. I mean, I was like, you know, didn't know much at that time. I had time to catch up though, or at least to evolve as I think any human being should, which is reading, informing one another, talking, you know, and so on. So this is the India. As I said many times before, US's diplomacy is threats, blackmail, they escalate. Threats, blackmail, regime change and bombardment or invasion. These are the, unfortunately, our country's tools since 1991. They had diplomacy before. Why? Because they had to deal with the other guys. Now, after 1991, they said, hey, we are Johnny on the block right here, so we can do what the fuck ever we want. And they did. And then people saw and said, okay, took note of it. And they said, okay, hold on, hold on, you back off. So India said, no, we're not going to participate in your sanctions things, even though they do participate to a certain extent. I'm talking about the Indian government, who looks for its people, not for those big interests, to a certain extent, obviously. So let's see what Moscow does in Afghanistan. Russia Today. Moscow to remove Taliban from terrorist list. The de facto rulers of Afghanistan could become partners in fighting ISIS, Russian officials have said. Moscow will remove the Taliban from the list of terrorist organizations, Zamir Kabulov, Russia's presidential envoy to Afghanistan told journalists on Friday. The change was also confirmed by Alexander Bortinikov, the head of the Federal Security Service, FSB, which is responsible for combating terrorist threats. Russia was among the first nations to establish contacts with the Taliban after it seized power in Afghanistan in 2021. Russia has not formally recognized the group as the governing force in the country, however. So, it says here, in May, Kabulov, Describe the Taliban as definitely not our enemies. End quote. So, wherever you go, you know who I'm talking about? You do bring uh, freedom and democracy and leave garbage over there. Then you get out and then everybody else comes in and they take over. Very good, very good. Now I know that Afghanistan has some uh, resources, some natural resources that China is very eager to grab them and Russia to control them. Good job. Very good diplomatic move, USA. But hey, they fulfilled their goal. You know what the goal was? There were some big corporations and the military industrial complex that made a kill over there. A lot of profits. That's the whole thing. And the United States of America invo was involved there with some billions of dollars. Billions of dollars for reconstruction and keeping that country safe from... Uh, keep us safe from something. And then what? Those companies who were allowed to invest over there or to do projects of reconstruction got fatter and fatter and fatter. Who paid for that? You and I, if you're an American citizen. Why? Because you paid more on taxes. These guys printed money and got loaned loans for that. Why? US works in a deficit. So 
We consume more than, than we produce. So where do you get your money from? From your butts? I mean, anything there? <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately, right? I would like to put money. All right, like the US Treasury. <laughs> Next one. Let's see what Zelensky is up to. All right, Russia today. 4th of October, Zelensky preparing new purge of top officials, media claims. I think these guys are toast. This is Budanov and this is Umerov. This is a Tatar and this is a Ukrainian. Where is the Zelensky Stein? He is in power. He's gonna rule over you. Spy chief Kirill Budanov, a defense minister Rustem Umerov may soon be sacked. Are they gonna go to London? <laughs> uh, they can't go to Israel, uh, you know. <laughs> Maybe not even to, to New York. They are not those kinds. Ukrainian leader. He's a leader and he's Ukrainian. These guys are retards. These guys, Russia today, right there. Vladimir Zelensky has become increasingly dis displeased with the work of military intelligence head Kirill Budanov and Defense Minister Rustem Umerov and could replace them in the coming weeks. Several outlets in Kiev have said, no, I tell you what the problem is. The problem is, let's see if we have this name right here. Yep, right there. This is the guy, Yermak Stein. So this has the problem, strange relations with Zelensky's chief of staff, Andrei Yermak. So Andrei Yermak, as um, Budanov, Budanov was trained by CIA, just so you know. <laughs> Who's there? Who there? And then Yermak was appointed by his buddy, his employee at one point, Zelensky. Yermak is a film producer. You know, like, how do you call this from DreamWorks? Uh, whatever those guys are, they make all kind of Schindler's List every year for you guys to be ashamed of yourself and your past. Somehow, um, you know, he, he was a film producer and he organized some little shows with Zelensky Stein. And Zelensky Stein appointed this guy when he was elected. Okay. All right. And how did he get elected? Who founded Zelensky? Uh, Mr. Uh, Koloklovsky. Koloklovsky. I, colo I call him colonoscopy. All right. Then now Zelensky, I think, protects him by incarcerating him, keeping him safe from I don't know exactly what threats are out there. But he kills this Kolob Kolonovsky, I think his name, a uh, Israeli Ukrainian citizen, I think he is. Um, all right. He keeps him safe, arrested and keep. Oh my God, this is a protection. So that guy now is protected by Zelensky's government. And who's paying for that? The Ukrainians. Good job. The sooner you get rid of that garbage on top of you guys, uh, the freer you will be. And to do that, you have to go to uh, Washington DC to make sure, or to New York uh, for that matter, and make sure you um, free yourselves, part the people. <laughs> All right, I like slogans, right? Let's go to the next one. Russia Today, here we have Stoltenberg. Kiev may have to accept loss of territory, ex-NATO boss. Now you say it? <clears throat> Ukraine could end up sacrificing land in order to end the conflict with Russia, Jens Stoltenberg has said. Ukraine may have to recognize the loss of some of its territory to Russia in order to achieve peace and security guarantees, Jens Stoltenberg said in his first long interview after stepping down as NATO Secretary General. Well, now you say it, that means he is off. If he would really mean that, he's either going to be, he knows that he's toast, he's out. That means he's going to either move laterally or down, he has no, no, uh, no other place to go. But hey, he knows whose ass he has to steal. Okay, so let's see what this guy say and see what Putin said. And let's see what options the Ukrainians have. All right. right, right, right here. He says that he told in an interview with Financial Times published on Friday, he said that Kiev may be forced to rethink seeing the restoration of the 1991 borders as a prerequisite for any peace deal. Stoltenberg suggested that, and I'm quoting, a kind of new momentum would come after US presidential election in early November, possibly ushering in and I'm quoting, ways to try to get movement on the battlefield combined with movement around the negotiating table. The West should, and I'm quoting, make the conditions that would enable Ukraine to, 
and I'm quoting, sit down with the Russians and get something which is acceptable, something where they survive as an independent nation. Now, after you ruined it, like Afghanistan, okay, ask what he could, how he would propose to Ukrainian leader, again, Ukrainian leaders are baboons, Zelensky, the former NATO chief offered a comparison to the resolution of the Soviet Finnish war nearly 85 years ago. And I'm quoting, Finland fought a brave war against the Soviet Union in 1930 or 39. They imposed much bigger cost on the Red Army than expected. That's true, he said. And I'm going again. The war ended with them, the Finland, give, or the Finns, giving up 10% of their territory, but they got a secured border. Uh, you know who was in charge in 1939 of Soviet Union? Not the Russians. No, no, no. Stalin. Stalin meaning... meaning I don't know, loosely, man of steel, the man of steel. And it's got a, like Budanov, a uh, hand that is very much, uh, how do you call it, differently abled. Uh, Stalin had, what, the right one, I think? And this guy, I think, the right one. Look at Budanov, he can't extend his arm, so he can't uh, give us a salute or anything like that. The same with Mr. Stalin. Uh, Stalin's name was, I think, uh, uh, Saryonovich Jugashvili. Um, he was a Georgian, by the way. And look uh, at his uh, entourage. They were all Russians. All right, let's move on. See what the Russians are saying about their military operation. All right. So Russia has said it would not accept Zelensky's 10-point peace formula, and they will try to obviously, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, accomplish their four goals. First one, Ukrainian troops out of the oblast that joins Na NATO. Russia through referenda, that's the first one. Second one, they have to forget about NATO. Third should be a um, nu nuclear, neutral, neutral country, demilitarized and denazified. And probably United States of America, get the f off. Uh, these are the conditions because this was an unprovoked war that Russia just choose to conduct, not a military special operation, like is a limited operation of the Israeli forces in Lebanon. See? Anyway, let's move on. What do we have here? I'm going to show you... I'm going to show you how Vance and Trump, who they belong to. I'm going to read the titles. First, Russia Today. Israel free to choose. Vance said, the US should support its ally even if it carries out preemptive strikes against Iran. The Republic, Republican vice president candidate has said, the US should support Israel in retaliation against Iran if it includes a preemptive strike. Good job. So, and this guy is uh, saying here, I'm quoting, look, it is up to Israel what they think they need to do to keep their country safe. And if Iran hits back, we're going to intervene. <laughs> and we should support our allies wherever they are when they're fighting the bad guys. All right, so you know who this guy is, correct? That's the right approach to the Israel question. So you know who this guy is. Next one. Let's see what Trump has to say. Israel should strike Iran's nuclear sites, Trump says. Preventing Tehran from acquiring weapons of mass destruction should be a priority, the Republican candidate has said. I think that's too late now. Israel should carry out strike, a strike on Iran's nuclear facilities to avenge Tehran's recent missile attack on Jewish state. Again, Jewish state here and Jewish state here. Where the fuck are you? Right here. Right there. You got to get that in your hard melon over there. And you, you know, skull. Argue. Early in the week, pop, 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 boop, boop, boop. So, they are all for that. So, what if Iran retaliates as the bad guys as they are? and hit out the um, Jewish states, let's, let me kiss some, some ass here, a Jewish states nuclear facilities. Would that be acceptable? I mean, self-defense, no? Mm -mm. Okay, so now you know who these guys are, are on the same page with the other guys. They play the same team. All right, let's move to the second, to the second, to the next article. The Russians claim uh, they are they secured a strategic victory in Donetsk, liberating settlement of 
Zeleanoia. I'm going to look where Zeleanoia is. Battle Group Yug forces struck six Ukrainian brigade formations in areas by the settlement of Reznikovka, Zanovka, Belaya Gora, and Maximilianovka in the Donetsk People's Republic. The Russian Ministry of Defense has announced that units of Battle Group Yug successfully liberate the settlement of Zelanoye in Donetsk region. All these things are towards Pokrovsk. Here is a map. So this is Zelanie, Zelanie right here. And here is Pokrovsk. And down there is Donetsk, the city of Donetsk. So here is Donetsk. This uh, the liberated town is northwest. And then you got Pokrovsk that way. So let's see on this map where all that is. This is a map of Ukraine. This is the contact zone. And we go into Donetsk Oblast. We have all this bulge here. These guys are advancing, the Russians. And here is Krasno, Krasno Armeisk. This is how the Russians call Pokrovsk. So that location is in this zone. This is Donetsk right there. Right here. So is in this area towards Pokrovsk. I have also uh, not that, of course, um, a different map. This is more updated better looking and let's go to Donetsk all right here and we have here Pokrovsk Pokrovsk is right here all right this is very sensitive garbage here but hey it helps me what can I say so they uh, liberated in here and we have more uh, statement saying that hey we liberated more Pokrovsk is uh five miles four four kilometers they're four kilometers from Pokrovsk the Russians at this point all right so let's see where are we now uh why right, right here UK defense intelligence considers Russia's next target following Vukhledar Donetsk Oblast so if you remember the Russians took over Vukhledar and uh, the US intelligence Tell us what will be the next target for the Russians. And that is Northeast and Zaporozhia Oblast. There you go. UK Defense Intelligence for forecasts that after the capture of the city of Bukhledar in Donetsk Oblast by the Russians, their next target will be the settlement of Volika Novosilka in Zaporozhia Oblast. Where is that at? I'm going to show you. Not that, but this. So this is Bukhledar right here. This is the, the town that was liberated. And they're going to go to Zaporozhia Oblast. They're going to be northeast, north, northwest. I have this, this map that shows a little uh, a better uh, map than that one right here so this is Vukhledar right here and the Russians will go towards right here this is a location so from here they say they will push forward in this area all right let's see what else we got this is according to UK intelligence and another article coming from Ukraine form Russian army may try to seize Velika Novosilka following capture of Vukhledar the Russian army will likely attempt to advance beyond the town of Vukhledar in the Donetsk region in the coming weeks. And their likely next target is the village of Papapa, pip, 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 the UK intelligence defense ministry said. Well, what can you do? Defend it. So this is the town from Vukhledar on a different map. V Vukhledar is right here. And this is the town, the one that I already showed you on the big scheme of things. This is the Sea of Azov. This is the Crimean Peninsula. All right, let's move on. Ukrainian military confirms Russian claims of Selidove capture are false. So the Russians claim somewhere that they uh, took over Selidove. I will show you where that is. And the Ukrainian military says, no, that's false. And we have a serviceman from brigade, from a Kara, 15th Karadag brigade, told radio new voice of Ukraine that Russian claims of capturing Selidove are false, emphasizing that the town remains fully under Ukrainian control. And that is located 
right here by Donetsk. Again, Donetsk, the city of Donetsk is right here. So north west is the same area by the Pokrovsk. So somewhere in this right here, in this area. Donetsk is right here. Northwest is that way. So again, the Russians are continuing their advance, advance here and they will get to Pokrovsk. I have no doubt about it. So that's the that's the first video for today. I will make another one after this with some more and more and more more news and then one, make one from Glen Arbor probably. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.